Moving on, today's job market is competitive and flooded with ambitious college grads, all fighting for the same positions. But our next guest knows a thing or two about standing out from the crowd. Marion E. Brooks is a global business leader and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience coaching the next generation of entrepreneurs. Today, he's sharing his tips for success in his new book, What You Don't Know Is Hurting You, Four Keys to a Phenomenal Career. Everyone, please put your hands together for Marion E. Brooks. If it's not an article, I don't read it open. Nice to meet you. I'm Lucas. Uh, Marion, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining you us. Oh, go this way, okay. <laughs> Welcome hey, to the table. Nice coming. to meet you. Hi, nice to meet, meet you. you. All right. Um, so we we all need help with our careers. So <laughs> I'm happy you're here. I get to go through the book a little bit, and a lot of things jumped out at me. But first, I want to know why now? Why did you feel like now is the time to write this book for you? So for me, it was about uh, granting access to everyone to the information that the chosen few usually only receive. So in corporate America or in business in general, only 5% of people are considered high potentials. Mm. And they get access to information, training, and support that the other 95% of people don't get. I was one of those high potentials early in my career. Now I'm an executive coach, so I want to share with everyone. So everyone has equal opportunity to grow. And for you, speaking to millennials, what is something that you can tell them to get into that high potential category? The key thing, I think, for millennials is to focus on emotional intelligence. So there's a, an equation that 80% of success is based on emotional intelligence, or right. EQ, and only 20% is IQ. So there are Good. a lot of smart people out there, but not a lot of emotionally intelligent people. So right. I say it this way, IQ will get you hired, but EQ will get you promoted. Totally. Makes so that's, sense. that's good to hear because my IQ is not <laughs> great. And, and in your career personally, what, what, is, what, was, what has that been like? I know you came from very humble beginnings yes. and now very successful. So can you tell us more about your career and where you are today? So yeah, so I actually have been a, an executive in the pharmaceutical industry for the last 20 plus years. Uh, I'm an executive coach now as well. I have my own coaching practice as well as I teach workshops and keynote speaking. Um, but it was a path that I had to build based on these four keys. Mm -hmm. And the, the opportunity is equal for all of us if we understand and get access to the information. And then the toughest part is applying it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get access, but everyone doesn't apply it. So I'm giving you access, now you have to do the work. And you know, speaking on you know, how you actually execute all of these uh, ideas, what is like the most common mistake that you see millennials in particular making when they're trying to land a job? Uh, it's actually networking. So they go in and they ask people for a job versus asking for insights. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's a thing where people show up and they feel like they're around a lot of parasites. So the key thing I tell millennials to do is to go in and do some research before you get there, identify some people you want to learn something from, and ask them for some time to get insights on how they got to where they are versus asking for a job. Mm -hmm. Once you build a relationship, people will be willing to support you and help you. But yeah. if you come in asking and trying to take all the time, you turn people off. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that millennials tend to switch their jobs a lot mm -hmm. more often than at least like my parents and grandparents have done. Like I have friends who've worked at one place two years, the next place one, the next place three years. What is your take on that and how millennials change their jobs frequently? I think it's chasing titles and money versus skill sets and expertise. And so when you are doing that and you're jumping from job to job because you think you deserve more money or you're chasing a title, it sit, puts you in a situation where you get to a position and you don't have the skill sets to be successful in that position. So what I say to do is focus more on skill sets and you'll get the opportunities to accelerate. And a lot of people that have been in positions because they were jumping around mm -hmm. are failing, whereas the people who are working on their skill sets have accelerated ahead of those people. Yeah. So focus on technical skills versus titles. Yeah. And what do you think they, that uh, millennials can do to, to really feel and know when is the right time to ask for a promotion and move forward or, ch or make a change in their career? I think the key for that is around making sure that you are prepared for that next role. So what have you been doing? So if you have, can have a conversation and say, I've done this, this, and this to prepare for that role because I know this skill and these resources and these connections are important in that next position, that's when you're ready to ask for something, when you can explain what you've done to prepare for it. 
One of your chapters asks people to determine whether they're a Hyundai or a Bentley. Yes. Uh, obviously, self-confidence is really important. So what are some tips to really feel like a Bentley? To feel like a Bentley. <laughs> so it's believing in yourself. So showing up and telling yourself. The stories we tell ourselves is how we project. So if you go in and you say, I'm nervous, I'm not good enough, your energy says that to other people. Mm -hmm. So you have to go in and you have to self-talk. I'm prepared, I'm clear, I'm concise, I'm impactful, I belong here, and it gives you energy. Mm -hmm. Also, the power pose, right? The Superman yeah. pose or the Wonder the Woman pose, oh, yeah. it actually activates chemicals in your brain wow. that exude confidence to other people. Wow. So those are two quick tips. I do like making entrances, I will say. I do walk to them like, I'm here! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll yeah. just do that now, too. Or you can do it in the mirror. You don't have to do uh, it in front yeah, of everybody. Oh, I thought I'd do it in front of you. Oh, Before okay. you get there. As you mentioned, there are a lot of smart people with low emotional <laughs> intelligence. Yeah. Lucas is just one of them. Yep. Um, <gasps> what would be the biggest thing you would tell yourself at 25 <laughs> if you could go back and be like, shake yourself and be like, just know this one thing? Be confident and okay. my skill sets and my abilities, because I questioned myself a lot, but I was always prepared. I just didn't believe it all the time. So believe in yourself and prepare for success, and it will come. I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so simple, but so hard to do for so many people. It so is. I'm glad that we could sit down and chat with you today. Thank you, Marion, for joining us. All right, and uh, be sure to pick up a copy of What You Don't Know Is Hurting You wherever books are sold. Yep, thank it you, was for Marion. All right, thank, thank you so much.